Capella, you ruined my flowers! But you have your own garden at your house, Abuela! So now you're rude and reckless! What are your parents teaching you? I hated it whenever my papa's mother, Abuela Rose, visited. She was always so controlling and spoiled all my fun. Isabella, come on, it's story time! That was my little brother, Juan, and we were from a small village in Mexico. Our parents were both awesome archaeologists. Juan and I practically grew up on their stories, and that's how I fell in love with adventure. Don't forget to like and subscribe. <gasps> the Spanish conquistadors wanted the mirror of Tezcatlipoca from the ancient Aztec people. But the Aztecs hid it because it was too dangerous in the hands of humans. Why? It can cross realms. If it falls into the wrong hands, it can be misused. I'm scared. I'll find the mirror and protect you. <laughs> what if monsters crawl out and grab you? Ah! Sometimes, they even took us along on their adventures. Juan was the scaredy cat, always hiding behind his books, while I was the fearless adventurous one, like my parents. Actually, scratch that. I was even worse. A reckless daredevil, jumping headfirst mm. into every situation without ever thinking twice. Mmm, berries! That's a pokeberry. It's poisonous. Oops, I already swallowed. My parents weren't so thrilled about my recklessness, and they always made sure to tell me. Isabella, you need to be more responsible and careful. You almost got hurt. Of course, Papa. Well, let's just say I learned my lesson for just about five minutes. Race you to the top! No matter what I did, they loved me so much, and home was fun whenever <laughs> Abuela wasn't around. When she was, she was always arguing with my parents about money. The kitchen window has been broken for days! It needs to be changed! I'll fix it tomorrow. It's cranky. It has to be changed, not fixed. Just like her. Things are tight. Then, work harder to make money! You know you still have a choice, right? You can still use Never. the- Never! It's too dangerous! What were they talking about? As Juan and I pressed harder against the door, it swung open, and my parents were glaring at us. <laughs> um, we didn't really hear anything, right Juan? What have I told you about lying, Mia? Fine, I'm sorry, okay? I was just curious. Don't eavesdrop on us next time. We discuss adult things children shouldn't hear. Fortunately, Mom and Dad weren't really mad at Juan and I that night. But in the following days, I caught Abuela snooping around in Papa's study room a few times where he kept all his research papers. Oh, Isabella, I didn't see you there. Are you looking for something, Abuela? Just my glasses. Oops, look at the silly thing. It was really suspicious, and on the day I wanted to tell my parents, they received a phone call. One minute, honey. You're hurt? Don't worry, Gerald. We'll come get you. Darling, Gerald fell from a tree. There's no one around him. He needs our help. Okay, let me grab the car keys. We'll be back, Mia. Take care of Juan. In a flash, they were out of the house, hurrying outside the village. Little did I know that that was the day my life was going to change forever, because they never came back. Juan and I spent the next few days asking everyone for them and looking everywhere. Mama! Papa! But unfortunately, our efforts didn't pay off, and a few days later, Abuela came over and made us move in with her. It was the worst thing ever. She came up with a whole list of ridiculous rules that Juan and I had to follow. No laughing too loud? How do you control that? <laughs> you learn. It's about time you children understand the word discipline. My adventure days also came to an end because we were not allowed anywhere outside the village. Abuela made sure the entire village was always <gasps> watching us. It was like she didn't even care that Mama and Papa were missing or us going out and searching for them. Whenever I asked, it was always the same answer. Don't worry, they'll be found. What if they're not? We have to go out of the village and search for them. They were captured by some bad men who were also looking for us. We can't risk going out. How do you know this? Which bad people? Mind your business, Isabella, and stay out of big people problems. <gasps> Abuela was so unbelievable. To make matters worse, I noticed that she was meeting a strange, fancy man every night. Who do you think he is? Maybe that's the cop looking for Mama and Papa. Hmm, he looks too fancy to be a cop. The next day was Dia de los Muertos. You know, the day when we dress up like skeletons and celebrate our dead like in that movie, Coco? Yeah. I noticed Abuela and the strange man again and followed them. Of course, I blackmailed Juan into tagging along. Come on, what if something gets me on the way? Like snakes? Fine, I'm coming. But if anything happens, remember I warned you. Yeah, whatever. Together, we crept behind them all the way to my parents' house. 
What are they doing here? Only one way to find out. We waited for them to go in before we tiptoed in and found them ransacking Father's study. He said it was here. Maybe he was lying. Not possible. He and his wife will do anything to see those kids. Oh my god, Abuela knew where my parents were. No wonder she was acting strange. As we watched them, I suddenly felt the floor move under my feet. It was a hidden trapdoor. We opened it and found a journal and a map. They belonged to Papa. Juan and I didn't waste any time going through them. Remember that story Mama and Papa told us about the mirror of Tezcatlipoca? Yes. It's real. They found it. I think that's what Abuela and that man are after. This has to be the map to the mirror. I bet it can lead us to Mama and Papa. We snuck out of the study to our old bedroom and dusted off our trusty backpacks and filled them up with all the clothes and gear we used on our previous adventures with Mama and Papa. Then crept to the kitchen and got some snacks. But on our way to the door, Abuela and her friend bumped into us. Oh my god, we were in so much trouble. What are you two doing here? Uh, hi, Abuela. We were just looking for- uh, A toothbrush. I lost it the last time I was here. A toothbrush? At this time of night? Suddenly, a grappling hook dangled out of Juan's backpack. Don't tell me you're leaving the village! Run! I grabbed Juan's arm, and we raced out of the house right into a dense forest, where we came across bandits. That old woman better find that map. I can't wait to get paid. And me too. They're working for Abuela. I have to deal with them. What? Don't even try to do anything crazy. But before one could stop me, I'd already gotten out a jar of hot sauce from my backpack. Remember the time you had this? Uh, yes, I spent hours in the toilet. Exactly. Can't have them chasing us, can we? I crawled over to the pot of food they had over the fire, about to dump it all in, but I stepped on a twig, suddenly alerting them. <laughs> Oops. Who are you? Come on, think fast, Isabella. I suddenly came up with an idea. How fair you, friends. I'm a lonely entertainer just traveling the forest. I peeped at Juan, and he looked embarrassed, but I didn't care. Do you think we're joking around? <laughs> of course not. How about I take those frowns off your faces with my dance? My dance moves were so funny that Juan <laughs> let out a chuckle, and they saw him immediately. That's, um, my singer. He sings, and I dance. Matter of fact, Juan was a terrible singer. One kiss is all it takes. When I noticed that the bandits were distracted, I revealed my hot sauce jar and spilled it at their faces. It was funny watching them crash into each other. Come on, let's leave before they come after us. Juan and I ran until we reached a stream. <laughs> that was fun. Fun? It was dangerous. Sometimes I wish you thought things through before doing them. Scaredy cat. Come on, let's change out of these. Juan and I changed into another pair of clothes, then I got the map from my bag and we studied it together, then ate a few snacks and continued our long journey. And boy, the things we saw. Snake! Ah! Ah! This was a bad idea. It's too late to turn back now. First snakes, then an alligator. Run! I wonder what's next. Just great. Come on, let's keep walking before they see us. That night, we found a small abandoned hut where we decided to rest, but the next morning, a loud sound woke us. This trip couldn't get any crazier! Oh no, what are we gonna do? Shoo, Jaguar! Go away! I don't think that's going to work. Great, I couldn't see this ending well at all for either of us. But suddenly, this strong, handsome boy jumped out in front of us and jumped on the jaguar's back like a knight and gave it a shot of something that made it slump. It's not dead, right? No. Just gave it a shot of tranquilizer. Are you two all right? Sure. <gasps> Thanks, man. What about you, Isabella? You're... you're... um, really good at catching jaguars. I think I fell in love right there. He was so handsome, like a fairy tale prince charming, and so strong. I mean, look at his biceps. I bet they felt like a tree trunk. I could picture myself melting like butter in his strong arms. Are you a magician? Because whenever I look at you, everyone else disappears. I'm going to puke. I ignored Juan and clung onto the guy like he was already my man. So, what's your name? Diego. Are you guys all right? Your parents sent me. What do you mean? I'm part of their research team. They sent me after you saying something about bad men and an evil abuela. Luckily, I bumped into you here. Oh my god, are they all right? Can you take us to them? They're all right, but I lost them. Wait, how do we know you're telling the truth? This. All right, we have a map leading us to them. You could tag along. What map? Can I see? Um, Isabella, can I speak to you for a moment? 
Juan pulled me to the side, and he looked really worried. Don't you think it's weird that he showed up when a jaguar was about to attack us, and now he's asking for the map? You're too paranoid. He showed us proof. I don't trust him, and I think I'll hang on to this. Whatever, I trust him. Much to Juan's disapproval, Diego stuck beside us throughout our journey. I was happy about it, but of course, Juan wasn't. How did you even learn to do that cool move on the jaguar? I bet you had the coolest martial arts teacher. He only tranquilized it. In a few days, we got to the end of our journey, reaching the old Aztec ruins on the map. Holy smokes! I can't believe my eyes! I'm standing right where Aztecs used to live centuries ago! Someone pinch me! Ow! Not literally! Juan, Diego, and I explored the ruins for a while until we found a hidden chamber. The paintings are so beautiful. Suddenly, we saw eyes glowing at us from the shadows and huddled against each other, scared. I have a bad feeling about this. They're just bats. Oh, they're everywhere. We should get out of here. Come on. We followed Diego out, and the next place we found ourselves in was a palace. Whoa. Hey, guys, what's this? A sunstone, the ancient calendar of the Aztecs. I wonder what it does. I think I saw something like that in Papa's journal. As Juan went through Papa's journal, Diego joined him, and it made him mad. Hey, man, stay in your lane. Sorry. Don't worry. You can join me here, Diego. Ah, look here. It says we need to turn the stone counterclockwise three times, then clockwise twice. What's happening? Immediately, the altar before us started to part, revealing a golden box. As soon as it finished, the rumbling stopped. Holy smokes, it's the mirror! Oh my god, I can't believe it! I bet it can show us where mom and dad are! As we talked, we didn't notice when Diego snuck up behind us and shot tranquilizers into our backs! Diego, what are you doing? The next time we opened our eyes, we were tied up. Diego was right in front of us, smirking with the mirror in his hand. <laughs> Diego, I can't believe you betrayed us! You shouldn't have trusted me. I warned you. I did- You're so reckless. That's why we're in this mess. You never stop to think about the consequences of your actions or anything. It's always about you. Juan's words shocked me, and I felt so guilty about everything. I'm so sorry, Juan. I'm so sorry. Before Juan could say anything, Abuela and the bandits from earlier walked in, <gasps> dragging my parents behind them. Mama! Mama Papa! Papa! Kids, you shouldn't have come here. You led that traitor here. He used to work with us until he was paid to betray us. <laughs> Still mad about the fake phone call. Relax, bro. It's not over, Gerald. Wait, his real name is Gerald? Like, the guy that called you saying he was hurt? Jeez, what else was the guy lying about? Enough! Where's the mirror? Diego strolled over to Abuela and gave her the mirror like he was her minion. What do you even need it for, Abuela? I owe Senor Garcia a debt. He's paying me millions of dollars for that mirror. Think of how rich we're about to be. Don't listen to her. The worst thing I ever did was tell your abuela about the mirror. No wonder she was always snooping around our house. You never listen to me. This is why we always argue. They started arguing, and I used the opportunity to reach into my backpack for the knife I had packed earlier. When I noticed they weren't watching, I cut my ropes and Juan's. Thank you. I'm really sorry for not listening to you, Juan. I'm sorry for yelling at you, too. You were right. I'm too reckless, which is why I need the smartest person I know now. Can you come up with a plan to get us out of here? Yes. Now that everyone's watching Abuela and Papa argue, go over to the sunstone and twist it. I'll grab the mirror from Abuela. I crept over to the sunstone and twisted it, and the ground began rumbling again. Everyone panicked. The building is about to fall! Juan ran over to Abuela and snatched the mirror from her hand. She tried to fight for it, but the ground's rumbling scared her and her men away. I've missed you, kids. Your evil Abuela kept you away from us just to blackmail your papa, her own son. I had to tell her where my journal was. Luckily, you got to it first. We learned from the best. That's my kids. Come on, let's go home. We know a secret way. Mama and Papa led us out of the ruins through a narrow passageway, and we immediately went to the town nearby, where we reported Abuela and her cronies to the cops there, getting them arrested. After everything, we returned home, and my parents kept the mirror safe in a place where no one could ever find it. We came back to living as one big family. At the end of my adventure, I realized that I had learned a valuable lesson. The importance of patience and teamwork. Sure, my reckless tendencies got us into trouble, but it was working together with Juan that got us out of it. Oops, someone's knocking. I believe you have something of mine. <laughs>